Hey everyone. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Chairman Elliott um, is not here. Mr. Obowski is not here. Mr. Boris? Here. Mr. Eisner? Here. Ms. Turner? Present. Mr. Glunzer, not here. Ms. Rich? Here. May I have the swearing in of the speaker, please? Is anybody's going to talk tonight, you're going to... Yeah, I need to read the quasi-judicial announcement you. first. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Adjustment acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the Board wishing to disclose any conflicts of interest or ex parte communications this evening? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak this evening, if you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So sworn. Okay, item number three, we have application number 18-150, variance to reduce the required setback between, between a pool and a screen enclosure. Um, Location is 1834 Lillian Avenue. Application to authorize a variance to reduce the required setback between a pool and a screen enclosure. Could you please go over here? Uh, yes. Uh, this is a variance uh, to reduce the um, distance required between a proposed pool, edge of a proposed pool, and a screen enclosure. Uh, this is in a single family residential R70 A district. And the subject property currently has a rear yard of 20.3 feet and a 10-foot uh, drainage utility easement within that 20 feet. Uh, the proposed pool is essentially a, a basically designed as kind of almost a lap pool design, narrow design. The widest width is 6.7 feet. And uh, there is a requirement for a 3-foot separation, 36-inch separation, in the code between the edge of the pool water and the screen enclosure. The applicant is requesting a, a distance uh, between those of basically zero. So um, in order to accommodate this pool, um, he's designed a, a kind of a, a narrow pool and would put the screen enclosure over that. The code does require that, that the pool be enclosed by a, a cage or some type of barrier. So that is the proposal. Um, the screen enclosure and the pool uh, must be built outside the easement. So um, that is the, the limitation on this property. Um, it, I won't go through the review criteria in detail. If you have any questions, we can talk about those. Uh, basically, the house complies with the district and with the setbacks, including the rear yard setback. And the applicant has proposed a downscaled pool designed to accommodate the reasonable uh, pool use without encroaching into the easement. The special circumstances of the property, which is the presence of that easement, have not been self-created by the applicant. Um, granting the variance would not confer special privileges on uh, to the applicant. Um, pools and screened enclosures are a common feature in uh, this zoning district. In addition, the pool actually exceeds the pool setbacks. It's just the, the limitation on having it in the easement. Uh, that is the issue. And the proposed uh, screen enclosure will not adversely affect the adjacent properties for, for that reason. He's maintaining sufficient setbacks 
um, for those properties. So there won't be any effect on properties um, any different from the, than a pool uh, in a rear yard of any residence. Uh, the request meets all of the review criteria established in the code and staff is recommending approval of the reduction of the minimum distance between the pool water's edge and a pool enclosure from three feet to zero feet. This has been properly noticed and we didn't get any responses to the notices. Okay. Anybody would like, um, anyone would like to speak for? Yeah, we're looking to possibly start construction on this um, the end of the summer. So I wanted to get this taken care of and added away. Um, it's uh, just a, because of the thin design of our backyard, um, I've designed a lap pool. Um, the original design is probably going to be a, a little bit shorter. It's the same width, so it's just going to be a little bit shorter. It's not going to go the full length of the house. It'll probably go a little bit, about 15 feet shorter. It's not going to be as long as I anticipated, but the width is I still need the variant. I would need the, the variance to be able to to do that because if we have to put the screen if you have to have that three foot then the pool would only be like four feet wide and it just it wouldn't wouldn't be worth it you know any comments from the board any questions um, i don't know if we can refresh our memory i know this was on our agenda from um last month and was um moved mm -hmm. this month yeah. um and what was the reasoning, I don't know if that was a staff issue or... Oh, no, no, it was my issue. I, 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 I'm in the construction sales, and we have national shows from the beginning of January all the way to the end of February. I I've been in, I spent 19 nights in a hotel room in, in, yep. in uh, January, so it was, I, it's just uh, something I can't get out oh, of. Oh, gotcha. You know, I was hoping, I was hoping in, you know, that I could squeeze it in, but I just, there was no way. Okay, I didn't, I just wanted to confirm okay. that there weren't any changes to content. Okay, no, no. welcome home. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Any you have any questions? So, my, is this pool now going to be slightly less than six feet? No, it's going to be slightly less than, um, what's the length? 42 feet. 42 no, width feet wise. With, oh, no, yeah, no, it's going to still be six feet. Yeah. So, th this is correct, then it's five foot eight. Yep. Five eight on the short end, and then it was six something on the. It yeah. Paper. Yep. Something on the other end. Yeah, there's a there's a bench there, which is yeah, like a, it's presumably it's option, under the bench, the bench is, is actually option, optional. Is that below the water line? Yes. Yep. yep. So I got gotcha. you. Yeah. It's like what they call it a swim out bench, I guess. Is it wide enough for the pool? Yeah. Well, I mean. You want to really know what the pool's for? Yeah. My wife wants to sit on one end and throw the ball to my dog so he can swim and back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> not kid, I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. Not kidding you. My dog requires a lot of exercise, and um, you know, this, we're gonna have a, you know the the deck is gonna be nice too, and we're gonna take down the um the, it's a screened enclosure. We're gonna actually open up the enclosure, so um, and that's it. I fully understand. I have a pool that I look at too. <laughs> and I don't know For why. My dog. I, but I don't know why I bought it. But I know, <laughs> but you know, he's got to have his exercise, and I can't. You know, I can't be taking him out every day, so I run him as best I can. But he's a very high drive dog, so and he'll be around for a while. He's still. He, was he, like he, they, the, he just just turned dog. a year old, so he's gonna be around uh -huh. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And so, and so, and the, the, the I'm assuming with the permitting. I mean, that's, I know that's not our per purview area of your purview but with um the safety issues of yeah i had checked with the building department and they've accepted the, the design so any other comments anything um public comment public comment anybody then go for the vote Motion. So you got a motion to approve. Okay, I'm sorry. Second. Now we go. For now call for a vote. Thank you. Miss Rich. Yes. Miss Turner. 
Approved. Mr. Eisner? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Okay. Wow, thank you. That's happy it. wife, happy That's life. <laughs> happy dog. I was going to say happy dog, happy wife, yeah. happy life. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. You're all set. You're done. This is a very entertaining board, though, so yeah. you may wish to stay. <laughs> you dropped something. <laughs> all right. You too. Good night. Next item on the agenda is application <coughs> number 18 19 167. Variance to allow a third driveway access location. Uh, 11 Tarpon Avenue, part and lots 12 and 13, block 6, Sunset Hills subdivision. Application to authorize a third driveway access point in conjunction with the construction of a new single family residence. Any, anyone? Yes, this, this is, uh, um, as stated, a, a request for a variance to allow a third driveway access for a single family home residence that's under construction. Um, this is a section you probably haven't seen um, lately. It is in driveway access management, um, stating that uh, the, the use is listed there on page one and can have a circular drive or a second drive. Uh, so two driveway access points. Uh, the applicant is looking to do uh, uh, have um, one driveway as permitted with the house under construction and also a circular driveway which will create three po access points. Um, this is in the R100 single family residential district. Uh, the um, home is located on, uh, well, the home under construction is located on Gulf Road and uh, the issued permit is a, a single family residence with garage carport and single driveway access to Tarpon Drive. The front of the home is oriented to Gulf Road, so the, the driveway currently goes in from the side yard of the residence. The applicant would like to install a circular driveway at the front of the home on Gulf Road. Um, so with the permitted access point, the circular driveway um, would create three total access points. The applicant has stated basically in, in the application that um, uh, because of the uh, traffic volume and speed on Gulf Road that she would like to have a way for um, people to pull into the front and pull back out without backing into traffic. Um, without going through all the review criteria, we can go over any questions you have on that. I'll go right to the findings of fact. Um, basically, the, the property is already permitted with a sufficient driveway of the maximum allowable width of 28 feet. So um, there were no special circumstances peculiar to the property that would warrant um, granting of a, a third access point on Gulf Road or, or just uh, with the project. Literal, literal enforcement of the code would not deny the applicant reasonable use of the property since there is already a permitted uh, driveway of the 28 foot width. So more than enough to, com to accommodate um, the required parking and access for single family residents. Granting of the variance would confer on the applicant a special privilege not allowed for um, other properties in the R100 district and really in accordance with this section of code, really any other single family properties in the city um, since they do not have the option of adding a third driveway. Granting of the variance would presumably not substantially diminish property values. Um, this is a, um, a collector road, Gulf Road, um, but I don't see the addition of two access points to Gulf Road as overly um, uh, impacting traffic. I mean, you've got Tarpon Drive, then you'd add um, two more access points along there, but there are other single family residences with driveways on Gulf Road. So I don't, I think it'd be a de minimis impact as far as adding an extra curb cut. So um, that one I, I didn't have an issue with. Uh, the request does not meet all of the review criteria in the code. 
So staff is recommending denial of a variance to allow a third driveway access point for the single family residence. Uh, this was properly noticed and there were no responses received. Okay. Anybody wishes to speak in support? Well, you want to ask staff first, right? So you want us to ask staff questions? Um, that's what I would like to do. Can we, can you hold on? Would, can we uh, be Michael asking staff first? Staff it, you can do it either way. You can either ask staff questions or you can have the applicant give his yeah. presentation. And while he's up here, you can then ask it. It's up to you. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. It's up to you guys how you want to run it. No, no, that's fine. Since she's up, let, let him do it. Sure. Okay. I, I mean, I can wait. This is my own. Oh, that's okay. Analysis. Thank you. And this is just a little visual aid. It shows the strip of the driveway as planned, but this is not. Well, not the driveway in the front. Okay. Um, I, I need a copy. Thank you. All All right, guys, first of all, I just want to say good evening. Um, so going through, you know, our own argument for the analysis of, of, the, uh, of the criteria. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Could you state your name and address for the record? Oh, please? I'm sorry. No yeah, problem. my name is Panor Mitis Koulianis. I'm speaking on behalf of the, the owner of the property, Andriana Tosopoulos. And the address of this property is 11 Tarpon Drive. Thank you. All right, so where was I? Okay, yeah, so we're requesting the variance in accordance with uh, Section 215 of the code. Um, so the first criteria about the need of the variance arising um, out of, you know, some kind of unique condition um, that is, you know, that uh, environmental or physical or some other condition. Um, for for this property, the thing is where it's situated. Not only is it on Gulf Road, which is a county, first of all, it's a county road, collector road, it's a very busy road. Um, not only is it busy by itself, but you have Jimmy's Neighborhood Restaurant, which I'm sure everybody here is aware of, and Speedway right across the street from this property. On top of that, you have two schools right on the same road. I mean, traffic can be at a standstill sometime on this road during the day. Um, beyond that, there's a lot of kids on the sidewalks all the time and adults exercising and things of that nature. So the, you know, the unique condition here is that there's a lot of traffic, more traffic probably than anywhere else in Tarpon Springs when you talk about roads on, you know, on that side of town outside of Alternate 19 and stuff like that. Um, so the fact that, um, that we have this amount of traffic here, I think is definitely a unique condition that, that, you know, and what makes it even more unique for this particular property is we have Jimmy's restaurant and the, and the uh, gas station right across the street. And there's people coming in and out of those places all day long. Um, now, something that I think we need to correct is that there's still gonna be a driveway in the, on Gulf Road, whether it's circular or not, okay? Um, and that has already been approved. We actually had to resubmit a plan with a, uh, without a circular driveway, and that's how we ended up getting approved. Um, so whether or not we get the circular driveway, there's gonna be a driveway placed there. Um, now, the second criteria is that the special, special circumstance particular to the property were not self-created, and obviously, you know, Ms. Tosopoulos had no hand in the placement of the two businesses there or the schools on that street, and she has nothing to do with the amount of traffic that's on that street. So it's definitely not a, uh, a self-created um, condition, and it's definitely unique to the property. Uh, so the next one is literal enforcement, and that it would deny the applicant reasonable use of the property. To that, we say that, you know, bottom line this is the safest way to do it you know if you're going to have you know her mother and her family are going to be coming to the, her house all the time 
they're going to be pulling in that driveway, if they're going to be backing out all the time, it's much more dangerous than if they could just pull around and pull out facing forward. See the traffic coming. They don't have to look out for kids walking by on the sidewalk. Um, so basically we feel that, you know, that the, to deny the circular driveway at this point would, would deny her the safest use of the property. And I think the safest use is a reasonable use. Um, criteria four is that granting the variance will not confer a special privilege. We feel that it definitely doesn't because number one, the benefit of granting this easement is, or this variance is going to confer a privilege on everyone who uses Gulf Road, all the kids that are walking up and down that sidewalk. Everyone who's there is gonna be safer if people are pulling out of that driveway head first instead of backing out. And finally, the fifth one is diminishing of property values. They already have said that they don't believe that's the case. Something that I think you know is an issue that was mentioned is that there's a 20 foot requirement and that you know that the easternmost po portion of the circular driveway may you know be 20 within 20 feet of the intersection there of Tarpon Drive and Gulf Road, but I actually have the plans here and it's it's. 30 feet or more away from with the circular driveway. Um, beyond that, there's also a county ordinance that talks about county roads. And um, that is ordinance number six. Mm. So it's section one sections 107 through 199 of the Pinellas County Land Development Code. Um, and part 1P of that code states that, and this is talking about uh, accesses of driveways to county roads, which Gulf Road is a county road. And that says that when you have a frontage of 50 feet or less, um, you're limited to one driveway. Uh, not more than two driveways shall be permitted for any property fronting on the same road. So I think another important part of this that we need to remember, this is a corner lot, okay? And contrary to what um, the analysis from the city, uh, you know, surmised, is that this is a non-conforming lot. It's not a conforming lot. And the reason is, is because if you look at the, the front and rear setbacks are placed on the south and north end of the lot. So the front setback is on Gulf Road, okay? That frontage on Gulf Road is 105 feet, and then it's 92 feet deep. Uh, the R100 uh, requirement is 75 by 100 feet deep. So the lot is not deep enough by eight feet. So it's actually non-conforming, and it's a corner lot. And I actually have the This is the property appraiser. So the lot is actually not. Not that that's a huge deal. Um, I have drawings of the house with the single driveway and the house with the uh, circular driveway, if you guys want to look at that. I don't know. Um, also, I've noticed at least one other property, specifically 509 Whitcomb Boulevard. That property has five access points. He's got a circular driveway in the front, and uh, down the wall that's on Bayou Ave, there's three more openings in that fence you know, to get into the property. So that looks like five access points on a single corner lot. And. <clears throat> Which I think that's what you had just given me. Oh, did I give you the wrong one? Um, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you go, no problem. It's special. <laughs> and. Uh, that's all we have. Any questions? Yes, thank you.
I have a question for staff. Is there any ordinance or ruling for a corner property? Um, ordinance or ruling as to whether they can have more than two driveways? Correct, or over 28 feet? Uh, no. So they cannot have over 28 feet, whether it's a corner property, and there is no additional driveways um, or access points for a corner property? No. Okay. So then I'll go back and ask you these questions. As you were going through the variants of uh, the uh, criteria, yes, I had um, pretty much the opposite of what you had said. The fifth criteria, I agree with you, it's not going to change property yes. values. But as far as the first four, um, I, I am not convinced of any of those of what you described. Um, to put a circular driveway on a busy street, to me, is suicide. They should be using the side, um, the side entrance. You know, the side driveway. Of course. I, I don't understand why well, you would. The front of the house is on Gulf Road. That's that's the front setback. I understand all and that. And there's going to be a driveway there because it's the front of the house. Sure. You know, and it just that's where the front door to the house is going to be. So, you know, it really doesn't make sense to have a front door and not have a driveway. Um, you know, and. The fact is, I think, you know, that there is a condition there that's not self-inflicted, that is unique, and that, I mean, you you know Jimmy's Neighborhood Restaurant and the gas station there. How much traffic is in and out of that place all day long? And this is directly across the street from it now. You have to realize it's not down the street from it or up the street from it. You're look directly across the street, you know? I know the house well. I know the area because yeah. I believe um, your client came in front of our board Yes, for a variance prior to about a carport. So yes. I, I remember that. Um, just to give you an eye, and, and the, another answer, um, this house you're speaking about on Whitcomb, I don't know how they got their thing done, but it, we're not in any position to utilize another location as a telltale. They could have 16 driveways, and it wouldn't change our opinion it wouldn't be we that. wouldn't be allowed to change our opinion by that i realize so, that and that's why i didn't really spend too much time on that well, I, I, I have to answer your I, I have to answer your of course what you're giving me is facts because you've been denied by staff and it's your job to convince us that it's not only necessary but that you pass all the criteria and that's where I was sitting listening to you and trying to understand your definitions of how this passes the criteria when, in my opinion, it doesn't. Um, so that's uh, all the other homes on that block have the same exact situation with Jimmy's. They all don't have circular driveways. They all back out into it. Um, I know what it's like there in the high school and the you know, the elementary school and Jimmy's and all that stuff. I know what it is. Um, I personally wouldn't, if I had a choice and I was putting in a house and it's just my personal comment, I would be only having a driveway on the side of the house on Tarpon, whatever this is, um, Tarpon, Drive, Tarpon yeah. Drive. And I wouldn't put, I would agree with you, I wouldn't put a circular driveway or any driveway in front of the house. I'd put a sidewalk. Yes, I would put a entrance to my house, but I would be entering on the side. So in, in my opinion, and that's what you're, you're coming in front of this board, asking our opinion, you're trying to convince us to um, change or agree with you that this denial um, is, is incorrect. And like I said, I went through each and every one of these criteria. Well, if you could, for me, Criteria number one, why doesn't it apply? Why, why isn't there a, a unique situation here? Why, why is that not a unique, you know, well, physical, your, physical I'll answer your question. situation to that, to that specific property being on the corner in that spot across the street from Jimmy's right on that road? Well, your definition that it's unique because Jimmy's is across the street is not my definition of what unique is. I mean, you can have a down the block, you could sit there and say that 
The house is built is, is unique because it's across from top and high. Um, we can have people come up here and say, well, it's unique because the person across the street backs up with a big truck. It's unique. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that that's the definition that we're going to go by as a uh, criteria. Is there a definition set out in the city ordinance of unique? It's not a city ordinance. It's based on case law and ju previous jurisprudence through the courts. Um, and, and I think to kind of aid the conversation, the last part of that says it's unique and which do not apply generally to property located in the same zoning district. So if there's other properties next to that property, that doesn't make necessarily make those businesses unique to that property. Which is what I said to you earlier. They all on that block have the same exact situation. It's not unique that Jimmy's doesn't have a 40-foot tractor mm -hmm. trailer backing into your uh, driveway per se. You know, if that was the case, if there was a path, you know, a, a Winn-Dixie or something that was backing a 40-foot tractor trailer in, that would be a little unique, you know. Uh, this is just because it's Jimmy's, and I know, you know, they're busy um, with food. That's not really... Not only that, you got the kids walking up and down the street every day when they get out of school well, as well. And to clarify, maybe a little bit more specific to the law, it's unique to the physical property, not necessarily to the children walking or to the busyness of the road, but actually unique to the property. So what this mostly has to deal with is properties that are not square shaped, properties that are pie shaped, that go in in the back or, or in in the front, that there is not, it's not a regular sized lot. It's something that would be very unique to the property and, or and that it was on a grade of some sort that couldn't right, be right. flushed out so. or that it, you know, it was on a, a waterway that was different or it had some sort of But easement. this is a non-conforming lot that's not normal size. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. The, the plot is, it's square. There's nothing, it, from a oh. legal standpoint, there's nothing unique about the topical surroundings of this lot. All right. Un under the law i mean so. the lot's non-conforming that's and it was and it was called conforming by the city and that's a mistake because it's a non-conforming lot the front of the lot the the setbacks so what do we go by to s decide what the front of the lot is the setbacks or do we go by the address is there some kind of a rule on that um yes so the the lot is to answer that question, short answer is the applicant, the lot owner, can decide where his house fronts. This is addressed right now on Tarpon Drive. Uh, the owner, and, and, and it is a conforming lot, if the front yard were Tarpon Drive, but the city allows applicants to choose which street is the front yard this applicant chose golf road so that is the front that's where the front yard setback is measured as he mentioned the rear yard is is um where the carport is and tarpon drive is the side yard that was the choice of the applicant the fact that the house um is is um now i guess oriented that way is is something that that they chose to do. They did not have to do that. Just for clarification, are you saying that by choosing it that way, they made it a non-conforming lot? No, they did not. Okay, so in it, according to staff, it's a conforming lot no matter what? Yes, the it meets thing, the, dis meets the, the district. The last thing I'll say is, if you look at the, at the property appraiser's website and you look at the dimensions of the lot, it's always width, depth on every property Look at the width and depth on the property appraiser's website of this lot. It's 105 by 92. That means that the depth is eight foot short of being conforming for R100. And that's actually connected to what I gave you too. But we, yeah, we don't use the, the prop. And he's also addressed it on Tarpon Drive. So. But short answer is we do not use this document, his property card, to determine which one's width and which one's depth. Okay. And that's that's kind of because it's been flipped because of the I request. Mean, yes, with with respect to how the house was placed and the the front. The, the I carpet. yeah I I'm assuming that the applicant is going to address this on Gulf Drive. I haven't. 
uh, look at the application, the building permit application. But and, and keep in mind that all of the criteria must be met, not just one. And I guess that was for the benefit of the applicant, just, not for you. Just, just for clarification, if he chooses not to have the driveway on the side on uh, Tarpon Drive, would he be able to put a wider driveway in the front and or a circular driveway? Each street frontage could have um, 28 feet. So what they're proposing here is to leave the 28-foot drive on Tarpon and then the, put a circular drive. I think it adds up to 24, but they could do 14 and 14. Each street front, if you grant the variance. Otherwise, they could do a driveway on Tarpon, on uh, Gulf. On Gulf uh, and, yeah. and you did state that there is um, a driveway approved um, for Gulf? Yeah, because, because when she submitted the plans, um, after, after she got the variance for the rear setback, uh, there was always going to be a circular driveway on Gulf Road, you know, per the plans, until she submitted them. And that's when she found out that, hey, you know, this isn't allowed or you need a variance for this. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she went back and had to pay to get new plans drawn with just, you know, these guys charge for everything, you know. Right. Just a, a straight driveway or traditional driveway, I guess you would call it. And that was approved. So, so the driveway is going to be there. And we're just trying to make it as safe as possible. That's what it comes down to. You know, that's, that's all this is about. Safety. Her mom is older. She's going to keep getting older. She has a big Greek family that's going to be coming by the house all the time. A lot of older women and men. And they're going to be backing out of that driveway now. And, and their chances of getting in an accident backing out versus going out forward are probably you know much greater and that's that's the sole reason for the circular driveway in front it's a safety issue and i will point out that the vision and mission of the city of tarpon both mentioned safety for for the citizens if you're referring to safety you know what happens i, I this is just me speaking now a driveway just becomes a parking lot so nobody actually pulls in and pulls out. It becomes people pull in from both angles, both sides, so you just have two people backing out as far as I'm concerned. So I'm just letting you know if that's what you're going to say here, I'm going to say to you, it, it, people don't have any sort of organizational skills that we should be first in, first out. It just doesn't happen. She'll be out there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I understand. I'll wait to see that. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? Mm -hmm. Just uh, for my clarity, if they chose, if I heard correctly, if they chose to forgo the driveway access on Tarpon Road and they didn't do that, even though they submitted and it was approved, since they're addressing on Gulf Road, they could then request to have the circular on Gulf Road if they forwent the Tarpon Drive. Is that correct? They would have to resubmit the circular without the... Yes, that's correct. Although their garage and carport is designed on Tarpon, so we would... Um, I guess they could submit a, a driveway that drives back to the garage. I'm not sure how they do that, but I mean, the short answer is yes. And if they went back to the singular driveway... Is that the 28 feet that you all are saying? This yes. is, is 28 feet. I'm just trying to get an idea. Is that normal to do like a K turn and a, to be able, if they didn't want to back out, would 28 feet allow the car to do a K turn to get out front way? 28 yeah. is tarpon uh, ruling that you can't have more than 28 feet. So you, it's 30% of your um, property. But wide enough to do but a it is, turn. But it is but measured map, at yeah. the front lo front property line, so it could it could widen from there. In other words, the part that's on your property, like you're saying, could could be a parking pad or whatever. So there could be a parking it's measured pad. At the same, I guess that's line. what I'm. There could be a parking pad option closer mm -hmm. into the house if. Oh yes. To, there could to be. be able they to could turn, turn around, around and go back out. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Yes, Since the 28-foot driveway on Tarpon uh, Drive uh, must be there because of the garage, putting a circular driveway in the front of the house 
on golf road and eliminating the driveway will that work for you it's in the garage is right there how are you gonna let me see no that wouldn't work it won't all work. you gotta exactly. do is look at her face <laughs> i want to i want to follow up on mr eisner's uh, question to you and points yes, that sir. he made talking about traffic from jimmy's and all that the high school the staff and kids get there about seven o'clock in the morning the both schools finish up at different times the elementary school and the high school in the afternoon uh having said that the gas station has two driveways two wide driveways and also jimmy's has two driveways so the traffic is not being packed or backed up no way near because there's no traffic light the traffic light is on florida avenue so there is no it may be traffic but it's not traffic that's backed up so anybody can wait a few cars and then back up why because you have so much visibility when you come up on golf drive here they can wait two three minutes and if you want to put a driveway in the front how wide how wide how wide is the front driveway approved for how wide is it i think 28 feet at the entrance and then so driveway yeah the front one too on on, uh, on golf road yeah on golf road yeah so you can put two regular driveways one on uh tarpon drive and one on golf road 28 feet wide yes is that what you're telling me and I, you have approval i believe from the so city for that? i believe so you would have to do you have approval for the city for that yeah i believe well So oh, we're just clarifying that we're this clarifying the that there's approval for a 28 foot on tarpon and 20 and 28 foot on golf no it can't be no well, well no we're, we're so the question is the we're, question. we're asking yeah it, can you put a regular driveway you mentioned that you have plans for a driveway on golf road it's because it's it's uh, there are two different road frontages Two different points of access so i think staff can i think staff can clarify this yes, go ahead. but but i do not have the building permit uh, with me so i can't remember what it was permitted for oh. but yeah there are two different road frontage i mean road roadways so the whole thing about the circular they're, driveway. they're each measured on on i know it sounds strange but yeah they're measured on the, on each roadway for a corner so, lot. But that was my original question to you. I asked you on a corner property like this, if there was two different, um, if there's if there's two different, because it's two different corners, hmm. are you allowed 28 on one side and 28 okay, on the other? Okay, I misunderstood. I, I thought you meant is there some special exception or different rule for corner properties? No, there's nothing in here about corner properties. It's It's on the street street frontage so this, let me let me clear let me sorry. first clear my it's own it's the head third before. access <laughs> point <laughs> i'll deal with variance. you in a, in a heartbeat the issue with the variance is it's that because it's a circular driveway point. it's about the third exactly. access point so That's it's only allowed two it, access it's, points it's, it's, it's not the, not the three point. curb cuts instead of two curb cuts thank you Thank you. Thank on you. a road. And then That's I did want to issue. clarify for the record, you know, we've talked about on this board before about safety. So I just wanted to make sure the applicant knows safety is not part of your criteria. Right. So while right. it's been talked about a lot this evening, you all know, but just for the benefit of the applicant, safety is not part of the criteria to consider. Well, I mean, is. Let me first, if you don't mind, yes, I, I did, do need to get these facts because I've been under the wrong impression here. My original question, and I'll go back to it, is. So this particular house is allowed 56 feet of driveway. In two different? In two different sides, is that correct? No more than 28 on one street, no more than 28 on the second street. I just yeah. want her to nod her head. That's yes. correct. <laughs> okay, because I understood it earlier as, because that was what my question was. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference? On a corner property, so there is. On a corner property, yes, we're allowed yes. two twenty-eight entrances, correct? Yeah, I thought yeah. you meant with respect to the request, which was for the third access okay. point. But but, but, but still, the yeah. point, the number of the point of entrances There's is still 
two entrances. Two. That's all they get. Two point of entrances. For a single family residence. For a single family residence, yeah. corner or not, doesn't matter. Correct. Got it. So now I understand your questioning back here about if you were to remove, well, you, you don't even have to remove. I'm trying to understand why then the circular driveway is just a, a uh, an access point is the reason? Because it's it's, it, 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 the circular driveway creates the, a third access it, point. The, yeah, the issue is how many curb cuts can you have on a street? But these if are on I, separate before streets. you start to disturb the function per of the street. Property. Right, but and these the, are on separate streets. Per property. Right, but right, but the code says if you are a single family residence, you get two. When it goes to the uh, width of driveways, it talks about the right of way line, the, the edge of the right of way. So, so that's what it says. So I'm to understand, I just got to clarify this, because I'm sorry that I'm belaboring this issue. That's okay. So for a single property, you're allowed two 28-foot openings, but for a single property, you're not allowed three openings, but if they did away with one, they could have two in this, in this place. It just doesn't make sense. I know. Okay. Well, that's what, I understand. Our, job, that's what that, our job is here right. and that's, to decipher when something doesn't make sense. Right. I, 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 and, and no. It's not your job. Uh, yeah. It's the, absolutely not the board's job. Right. To give your opinion. It, it, no. This board's it's job is to make sure that the evidence that is presented at this yeah. hearing either meets or does not meet the criteria and either grant or not grant the variance. Right. If there is a problem with the code, that goes to the planning and zoning board. Yes. Thank you. So, right. so, so no matter whether you're a corner lot or just a regular lot, you could have two points of entrance. That's correct. So the, it's now the county, and I know this is county ordinance, okay, but this pertains to entrance ways, access connections on county roads. And Gulf Road is a county road. I don't want to interrupt you, but the side road is not a county road. It's no, but Gulf Road's road. a county road, and that's what this is about. I agree with you. But the side road is not, it's a city road. No, correct. So that creates three entrances rather than two, automatically. So it overshadows, it overrides the county or that you're referring to. Okay. And, and it just, I think that this could shed a little bit of light, though, whether it overrides it or not. It states in the county ordinance that you have not more than two driveways for any one property fronting the same road. So the county ordinance actually says you could have two driveways on either front, okay? So, and I, and I really feel that, you know, the city ordinance probably was taken, you know, from this. Perhaps you didn't understand the conscious point that we cannot legislate from here. Yeah. No, I understand it, it, that. And, and while I appreciate that, because you have to make your record, yeah. um, whether or not the county ordinance says that or not, this board can't consider the county ordinance. The, the house is within the jurisdiction of the city of Tarpon and, and the only reason I mention it is because I, I feel like there's this ordinance for the driveways isn't clear. And that's fine. And that is that is a decision and a determination for a different board. If, if that's, that needs to go before the planning and zoning board, and you can get that information and, and make that pitch to them. This board can only consider all of the evidence that's presented and whether or not it meets the criteria to grant the variance or not, based on the law that already exists. They can't change the law. They can't, even though sometimes they do, can't opine on that law. <laughs> um, they, so while that there may be frustrations with the law, they have a very limited scope in what they can mm -hmm. do. I so I, I would just ask that the conversation um, be brought back to the criteria and the evidence as it meets the criteria. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Do you want to withdraw this application since that ordinance that you have from the county, it's something that we cannot decide in any way, shape, or form and bring it back to the planning board? No, because the county ordinance won't affect the planning board either. And the county ordinance is going to be for... it is for, what it is. The yeah, that, the, that's the county ordinance is going review. to apply to properties that are within the county's jurisdiction. However, this is within the city of Tarpon Springs jurisdiction. Understanding it's also within Pinellas County, the city has its own code, so. Fine. So then, that, do you want to? One thing I will say, though, I know that the county, okay, when, when the county owns a road, 
for instance, Whitcomb Boulevard around the bayou. The county has, they take care of all of the mangroves and everything there on the side of the road. They, it's run by the county. The, this is a county road and we're talking about access points onto a county road and that's exactly what the county ordinance addresses. And, and I just want it on the record for in, in case we want to appeal this to the proper court. And, and that's fine. You can yeah. certainly make your record, but yeah. I'm going to I'm going to also make my record and say that the county ordinance has no bearing on whether or not this uh, application meets the criteria for a variance. Okay, let's leave it at that point. Anyone else has any additional comments? Mm. Anybody else wants to speak? Yeah, any members of the public wishing to speak Anybody on this application? Else? Okay. Any final thoughts from the applicant? Uh, just bear with me one second. Let me just make sure that I got through everything. Of course. It was one thing, another thing I want to mention is we went through a lot of applications for variances and we had a really difficult time finding any for this specific type of variance, uh, three, a third access point. Um, even though we saw that, and I know you guys said it doesn't matter, but you know, and I, and I looked into that property extensively, 509 Whitcomb, and I couldn't find an application for those, and he has three interest points on one side of the road and two on the other, that's five total. And I couldn't find an application for that for the life of me, you know, and I looked and I looked and I looked. Um, I even had uh, Ms. Tisopoulos look a little bit, you know, cause I, I couldn't, I was busy and, we weren't able to find anything. And we went through, I think all of 2016 and all of 2017 applications. Yeah. Well, without being redundant, uh, we cannot decide on some I know that. property. So I was just wondering if that, if there was ever an application for that, and if there was, can I request it? Um, if you'd like to request any uh, records, the city clerk has a records request form. Okay. Um, you would just fill that form out, put the address, put the request, and they will send it to all the departments that could look through our records. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know how old the house is, when it was permitted, you know, those are the types of things you would get back, any records we had on that address. On that note, you want to take my suggestion, back off on this one and then reapply again? The thing is, to reapply, I mean, I, I kind of can see the writing on the wall, you know, that... Well, you're running the risk that they may not have any record on it because it was done 50 years ago. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say, one, it, it's the applicant's decision whether or not they want to do that. But two, also, if the, if the evidence is not here today as to whether or not we they should... Decide. Well, I mean, if he if they choose to withdraw the application, that's okay. one thing. But if the evidence is not here today that meets the criteria, unless the circumstances change on the actual physical property or the design plans change, I don't see how any of that has any bearing on Your whether decision. or not it's going to be granted or not. The so criteria don't change. The last thing I want to say about that, that's criteria number one we're talking right the physical or environmental well keep in mind you property. have to meet all of the the applicant no, has to meet all of the criteria in order that. to get the variance. i understand that but for that for that criteria so it's a corner lot and it has odd dimension okay it has 105 feet of street frontage on golf road which is supposed to be the front of the house and then only has 92 on uh on tarpon drive which is supposed to be the side of the house which would make it non-conforming by definition because r100 zoning calls for 75 by 100. But this then, is 105 by 92. but then by that argument when you look at uh, um, criteria number two the, where the conditions or special circumstances peculiar to the property have not been self-created or not resulted from an action by the applicant or with prior knowledge or approval of the applicant the applicant knowingly put in to change the configuration of the, the frontage of the home which then by Act. what you're saying makes it non-conforming i understand so i understand you know, I've just, and I'm you not, also have, are the one that decide, or the homeowner decided to put in three driveways 
you know, free access points. So that is a self. When when she designed the house, she had no knowledge, obviously, of the ordinance. Which I mean, I know ignorance of of the law isn't isn't any kind of um, you know answer to that. But that that's what happened. You know, I don't know if she would have reconsidered. But I think the because of the way that the lot is shaped and where it is the most logical place for the garage was on the back of the house there with the carport where she, where she put it. And, you know, that creates a situation where, you know, the front of the house, the garage isn't there. So you need a driveway there and there. I was here yeah. for that case as well, I so I, I do know. But, you know, like we said earlier, we don't make the law. I get uh, it. We don't, yeah. we kind of have to deal with what we have to deal with. I mean, that's, that's all we have, you know, and I just, I wonder if, I don't know. I don't know if we should withdraw it or you could come back, but I don't see anything changing. I mean, we might as well just let them vote. And then if we want to appeal it, we can appeal it. I think that's the best way to go. It's your choice, not ours. We want you guys to vote. Okay. okay. Motion. To so again, any members of just want, since we had some more discussion, any uh, members of the public? Again, seeing none. Okay. Motion to. I have a motion to deny. Second. A second. Okay. Can we take a roll call? Miss Rich. Deny. So that's me. So the yes and the no. Yes. That's what Ms. Turner. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Eisner. Yes. Mr. Burris. Yes. And if it's any consolation, I have a circular driveway. 95% of the time, I'm backing out of it. Yeah. I mean, because there's always, you know, two people pull in the two different entrances, then, you know, then you're facing each other. I have a circular driveway and I'm backing out of it as yeah. well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Item number five, application number 19-01, variance to reduce the required side yard setback. Location 726 North Florida Avenue. Application to authorize a variance to reduce the required side yard setback in order to build the detached garage in the rear yard. Uh, this is an application to reduce uh, the required side yard setback from seven and a half feet to five feet. This is in the single family residential district R100. And the applicant would like to uh, reduce the setback required for a detached garage in the rear yard of the property. Uh, the, lots, the lot uh, is a conforming lot, it actually exceeds the district uh, standards. And um, the Written application does not provide a, a rationale for the reduction. The applicant is here, and I'm sure he'll address that. Uh, there don't appear to be any um, any physical uh, characteristics of the lot that would require the reduction of the setback. And again, the lot is um, approximately 20,000 square feet in, in area, and there appear to be no impediments, physical impediments, or, or um, uh, size constraints in the rear yard to accommodate a detached garage. Um, the seven and a half feet, uh, the, the detached garage setback requires uh, five feet in the rear, which he proposes to meet, and seven and a half feet on the side, or the district setback, side setback, whichever is more permissive. So the seven and a half feet is more permissive than a minimum of 10 feet that the district would require. Uh, the applicant is asking for five feet on that side. Um, we feel like the seven and a half feet is designed to um, mitigate uh, impacts to the neighbor, to the neighboring properties um, for a garage structure in the rear. Um, that that would be the minimum to mitigate those impacts. So uh, we have found that there are no special conditions or special circumstances associated with the property. 
that would warrant granting the variance. The condition on the property is not related uh, to the, again, the physical condition of the lot, and the lot conforms with the R100 zoning district standards, actually exceeds those standards. Uh, literal enforcement of that side yard setback uh, would not um, deny the applicant a reasonable use or the ability to put a detached garage in the rear yard. Granting of the requested variance um, would allow the yard, the garage to be in located in that side yard setback, and that is not an option enjoyed uh, by other persons in the, uh, these similar circumstances, residences that are permitted to have a detached garage in the rear yard. And um, we feel that the proposed variance is not in keeping with the purpose of that setback limitation impacts on the adjoining properties in the neighborhood. So uh, in summary, the request does not meet the review, all of the review criteria. Uh, established in the code and staff is recommending denial of a variance for relief from the minimum side yard setback for the detached garage. This was properly noticed and we didn't receive any responses to the notices. Dave? Um, any questions for the staff? Um, there's a, sh a shed on here, on this plot, plot. I want to um, see it first. Okay. That with, is that within the setback? Uh, it appears that it is. Sheds have to be five feet and five feet. I don't know if that's existing. I don't know if it's, I mean, that was not the subject of the request. And I'm just asking if yeah. that, that's. I, you'd you know. have to ask the applicant the status of that shed. But to answer your question, sheds are required to be five feet from the side and five feet from the rear. But that's based on square footage. Well. If it, it's 200 square feet, it can be set against the fence. Incorrect. Sheds have to be five feet from the side and five feet from the rear. But regardless, but, I mean, the shed was not footage? the subject of the application. All right. Just All right, yeah. thanks. Well, that was part of the confusion because we've been living there since 1975, and our neighbors have been living there similar. My brother-in-law lives to the part where I want to reduce it. Oh, am I not you, allowed to talk? Could you just hold on, a, hold on a second? We don't know your name. Oh, and, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you knew me. My name is uh, Terry Rooker, 726 North Florida Avenue. I've been up here a dozen times, and Miss Pat has been a wonderful help in guidance. Uh, we were going to build a shed, and then, like I said, we've been here since 75, and every, so like everybody else, you have a lot of stuff. And then we were going to start it out as a shed, and like I said, a shed at 200 square feet. You can buy them at Home Depot or anywhere else, drop them, plop them right there anywhere you want. Or you can. That was my misunderstanding, that you could put them together. You could buy two 200 square feet, you'd end up with 400 square feet, as long as your sheds. And then this one's going to be 380 square feet, and it's going to have a loft in it, so I can put all, I've got 40 plus years of Christmas decorations, a lot more general, everything else. And, and for clarification, you are now talking about the Garage workshop yes, that's on yes, the plant, not the work. shed that's not on the plant. Shed. Garage okay. workshop, we got a print right here. Right. And then the more confusing it got, the higher price the help got. So I had a, the architect drew this up. That's what, like you said, my architect had been in contact with Miss Pat, uh, and then they were hammering it out, and then that's when we found out it's going to sit right back here in the corner. My brother-in-law lives right there. There's an eight-foot plastic fence. Here, all these neighbors, all these houses have been built up. Like I said, we've been there since 75. It's my backyard. There's nothing else there. Five foot on each side seemed reasonable. Like I said, the seven and a half came as a, as a surprise. And it's going to be a nice looking building. All we're looking for is 30 inches, two and a half feet. Just um, have a five foot all the way around. So if we needed any 
access around it or to cut or to mow or to do anything, we could do that. So what is preventing you from complying with the code requirement of having it at seven and a half as opposed to the five? Nothing. We just seem to make more sense if you, excuse me, if you had the five, why, if five's good for one side, it should, to me, five should be good for the other side. Five foot, you can walk around it. Why do you want to give it, like, it's my backyard. There's nothing else there. My neighbor has nothing else there. There'll be no window on the back to, for any uh, light pollution or anything else that's going to bother anybody. And to, for, I guess, staff clarification, so our, um, the seven and a half foot, that's the side setback. The five foot is the rear setback. Is that correct? correct? Right. Okay. Okay, just wanting to make sure. Right, because see, that was why I was confused. Sorry. That's when the lady drew it up, and that's when uh, Miss Kathy talked to Miss Pat, and I said, you know, misunderstanding something. But then that's why we, we were advised to ask for an advisement before we went in for a permit. Well, they told us to go for both, and when, when I went to talk to Laney, she said, come over here. We, like I said, we've been here since 75. There's nothing else there. It's built up. There's no roads. There's no easement. I mean, no, uh, what's the other thing? Utility setbacks. And, yes. Right. There's nothing else back there to, to ever go through. They're not going to put a road in there. They're not going to build anything in there. So we're all we're residential. Other questions? Yeah, I might as well open my mouth again. Um, see, here's where we have a problem. Um, you're asking us to legislate again. And we don't make the rules. We kind of have to follow the rules even though I might agree with you that it doesn't make sense. But I, in order to, at least for me to vote in your favor, you have to come in front of us and be able to give us a reason for us to look at our criterion, criteria and say, he's bringing a point to us that we didn't hear or have in our back pocket before. Okay. And without that, I feel for you, but I don't have, my, my first question that I put on here was, which you answered when, uh, was why do you need that extra 30 inches? You have the room to move it over, you know, and be and conform with the, with, without going for a variance. Well, I have an existing slab there at five feet. That's why I, we, when we things started out at five feet, then we put the slab in there. That's when we found out about the seven and a half feet. So then you're saying then you'd have to tear up the slab and it would cost you to, right? Which is we, a hardship. Yeah, I know. Which. <laughs> so the slab's poured on that five foot line. Say again. The slab is poured up up to that five foot the, line. Right. The the slab is poured. At five foot from both in that corner right okay so you would if to be in compliance with this you would have to add, add an additional two and a half feet onto the I'd have to I'd have to shift that whole structure everything again like I said this this is expensive help you get so uh, you'd have to slide it two and a half foot forward and then pour another two and a half foot front on the front in order for this to, to, to remain the same size but if my, I could build on the existing slab, I simply put it up and it looks great. See, my, just here, number two would say, is this self-created? It is self-created, correct? Would you agree it with me? It was self-created through confusion about the setbacks. Like I said, we always thought the setback was five foot, so that's why we complied with that, and then we found out it was seven and a half foot. I know ignorance is no yeah, excuse. No, no, but, but let, me, let me just explain this one to you. <laughs> as much as you don't want to hear it, it, it says, is it self-created? It doesn't say, is it self-created due to ignorance? Or they should like, add that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> you see, again, we cannot, uh, and you know, forgive me, I, I right. feel for you. And we all feel for you. Then and vote we, for me. <laughs> well, it's not that. It's, we cannot make a you law. You just give the guy with a pool three feet, he's down to zero. Give me his three feet. <laughs> Can I make a I think that's called cool. let's make a deal. It's different. <laughs> it's a different this thing. is a first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'll make a suggestion. This yes, is not please. a negotiation. <laughs> you, you mentioned that it'd be easier to be five feet all around. Yes. Visually? Or, in this case, you put the slab already, that's why it's Yes. So that's a hardship. When, when, no, no, no. The hardship is... <laughs> don't, you don't want to go there. The hardship is... <laughs> All right, I'll shut up. Yeah, hardship's not good. You can also do it another way. Take seven and a half feet from the back and make it seven and a half feet all around. Rather than five. That they would, would look uniform. Seven and a half feet on the side set back, seven and a half feet. Seven and a half feet on the right, rear set back. And it's uniform as it sets. <laughs> it's uniform right now as it sets without having to do anything to the slab except build on it. True, except our hands are tied. Yeah. And we cannot, as Mr. Eisner said, we cannot legislate from here. We have gone through, through this for years, and the only the recourse you have or the citizen has to go before the city commissioners and then set yeah. it from there. Ask for the ordinance or variance to be changed. Uh, a lot of things are not unfair, but unfortunately uh, we have to abide by them. Well, <laughs> did you want to get up to speak? Did you <laughs> want to raise your hand? And did you? That's you my boss. Her in? Thank you, Mr. All right, you get, yeah, you guys just bought me a button flipper when I leave, all right? <laughs> May I apologize. If you would like to speak, I need to swear you in and you need to come to the microphone. All right. Well, it seems informal. This is actually a formal proceeding. Uh -huh. Uh, no. And 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 like we said, you know, we we completely understand. And as homeowners who you know have, we are yeah, we are you know weekend warriors on these projects. I you know we we you know sympathize, but you know as our council has stated, you know we do have to you know we are here to, to follow these. And one of the things that we have learned is that you know you had mentioned your brother-in-law is your neighbor, and you know. You know, y'all have been here, you know. Since the 80s. They live. We've yeah. been since 75. There's going to build nothing else there. We're not obstructing anything. We're not right. hurting the environment. And the, the no challenge is, creeks. is like when we um, vote on these um, variances, they go with the property, not with the homeowner. So if. A hundred years from now. That's right. Good. So a hundred years. And, and that's the thing. So that way. When, whenever you or your brother-in-law, whenever someone else is living in those houses, now whoever has your house after y'all do, then now they have inherited this, you know, um, this mercy circumstances yes, which this, you have granted. Right. So then, what happens is then now they're going to have the, your new homeowners are going to have their new neighbors butting heads and but they can't. Fussing. Well, there's we nothing that, that, right. so yeah, I know. There's nothing I, I, I'm just saying these are the things that right. we, we have, have learned from right. anything else you might our, our time. Thanks for listening. Thank you. They're like, why didn't I just get that Home Depot shed? <laughs> <laughs> right. If I'd have put two Home Depot sheds there, I could have set them side by side and just knocked out the middle. Instead, I tried to build something with a little style and class and screwed it up. Self-inflicted. We uh, appreciate your humor. You don't want me crying, eh? No. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. All right. Any discussion, Robert? Anything you want to add? We have a motion. No, it, it seems silly. I understand. Are there any members of the public oh, wishing okay. to speak for or against Yo, this right item? Yo, right there. <laughs> Stand up. That's a seems crowd. Right? We have to sit. <laughs> Two and a half feet, 30 inches. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But if you see you none. <laughs> but you still have to say it, right? I, you still have to say it. You got to make your record. That's fine. Anyway, motion. Motion to deny. Oh, man. You're breaking my heart. Breaking my heart. Oh, and, and I will Ours be the bad too. guy to second it. Motion. Ms. Rich? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. Mr. Eisner? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. That's a really cool looking shed, though. I mean, <laughs> you are go big or go home on these I'll things. I'll do my best. I like it. I'll do it. Add, add, to, the, add to the platform, you know, to the. Thank you, sir. I think we share a similar sense of humor. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, 
number, items. Item number six, approval of minutes for January 23rd. Any, discu any, any discussion? Any discussion? I read it, I found no, no issues. I have a motion to approve. I second. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Rich? Approve. Ms. Turner? Approve. Mr. Eisner? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Okay, any staff comments? No, no comments. Any board comments? Fantastic job, Chairman in a pinch. It was a very yeah, well yeah. run meeting. It was. It's only because I was his vice chair. <laughs> Barring the handicap that you had as your vice, you did exactly. a fantastic job. I appreciate that. That was very good. Thank, Thank you for allowing me as an alternate to have my first vote. <laughs> Thank you for making quorum for us. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, as time goes on, you'll understand some of the rules and regulations. That's what's. I still have the gavel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll stop talking. <laughs> What a done. Okay. Now you can talk. That was a very well run meeting. Mr. Yes. Shedman.